On June 29, 2011, a group of high school students from the National Outdoor Leadership School embarked on a month-long camping trip in the Alaskan wilderness. The seven students, Joshua Berg, Noah Lair, Sam Gotsigan, Sam Melman, Victor Martin, Shane Garlock, and Sam Boas, were accompanied by three instructors as they trekked through the western Talcastina Mountains. For 24 days, the group made their way through the rugged and difficult landscape, covering a total distance of 40 miles. On the 25th day, the instructors left the students on their own to cover the last 24 miles and put their newly acquired skills to use. The students were expected to complete the remaining distance in three days before meeting up with their instructors and returning to civilization. Before parting ways, one of the instructors shot a smile at the group and jokingly said, Don't die. As the students continued on their journey, they followed a narrow creek that served as both a trail and a consistent source of food. However, the creek's twists and turns forced the group to walk in a single file line, limiting their vision and making it difficult to anticipate what lay ahead. It was during one of these moments that Joshua Berg, who was leading the group, turned a corner in the creek and came face to face with a 500-pound grizzly bear. Despite being taught to stand his ground in the face of a bear, panic set in, and Josh turned and ran. The other members of the group heard him scream, and before they knew it, the massive grizzly had closed the distance between them. Cut off from the outside world and left to fend for themselves deep in the Alaskan wilderness, the group had only a GPS beacon to signal for help in the event of an emergency. They never expected to encounter such a formidable predator, but they were now in a fight for their lives. As the group hiked through the rugged terrain, they suddenly heard a thunderous growl that made their blood run cold. Before they could react, they saw a massive bear charging towards Joshua, its ferocity unmistakable. The bear quickly overpowered Joshua, slamming him to the ground with a deafening roar. In a split second, the situation turned from bad to worse. The bear clamped down on Joshua's head with its powerful jaws, causing a sickening crunch. Although some of the students had bear repellent, they were too stunned to use it as they watched the brutal attack unfold before their eyes. As Sam watched in horror, he heard his friend's screams of pain and terror. He realized that they needed to act quickly if they were to have any chance of escaping alive. However, as he hesitated for a moment, the bear turned its attention to him, pouncing with deadly force. Sam tried to fight back, but it was futile against the bear's immense strength. The bear bit down on his head, causing another sickening crack, but Sam somehow managed to break free and attempted to run. But it was too late as the bear caught up with him and began to tear into his flesh with its sharp claws. The sound of the boy's screams filled the air, a chilling reminder of the brutal reality they were facing. As Noah tried to help Joshua, the bear ambushed him, causing severe injuries to his scalp, back, and chest. The bear then lifted him up and shook him before throwing him back down to the ground. Meanwhile, the bear continued its vicious rampage, leaving a trail of carnage in its wake. In a desperate attempt to survive, the boys ran for their lives, seeking refuge in the surrounding bush. The air around them was once again still, but the memory of the bear's brutal attack would haunt them for the rest of their lives. While in a position seven feet above the ground, the bear spotted three of the boys who had been hiding across the creek bed, causing the bear to flee. However, in its haste, the bear accidentally latched its teeth onto Victor's left calf. Fortunately, Victor managed to kick the bear's nose, causing the bear to retreat further. Meanwhile, Joshua, who had his skull fractured by the bear, was still conscious and crawling towards his backpack which had the GPS beacon inside. Noah, who was nearly scalped by the bear's claws, managed to stand up and help Joshua get the beacon. However, the boys had difficulty opening the beacon, causing them to panic. Shane Garlock eventually used his pocket knife to pry the box open, and the boys were able to activate the GPS. With their coordinates sent out, the boys focused on their injuries. Sam Boas, who was a certified emergency medical responder, cradled Joshua's head, fearing he had spinal or brain injuries. Joshua's condition was critical, and he made a farewell video to his family and friends, saying his last goodbyes. Sam Melman led Joshua in a Jewish prayer, traditionally sung as a person's last words. While waiting for rescue, the boys did what they could to keep warm and help each other. Finally, a helicopter arrived, but it was not big enough to fit all seven boys, so Victor, Noah, and Shane left with the pilot. Joshua and Sam Goss again were too severely injured to leave and had to wait for another helicopter. Sam Boas chose to stay behind with the injured boys, while the other boys left. After three hours, the second helicopter arrived and took the remaining boys to the hospital. Victor was treated for the bite on his leg and released, while Noah had his scalp stapled back into place and his lung punctured by the bear's tooth. Sam Goss again was treated for broken ribs, 